Every person on this earth has, at one time or another, looked up into the sky and gazed in the moon in awe, or perhaps wished upon a star, or wondered what it would be like to be in outer space. For a special few, that privilege starts with a dramatic exit from Earth. Earlier this week, the space shuttle Atlantis launched the Kennedy activated. Space Center, bound for the International Space Station. Among six crew members on STS-129 was Langley's own Leland Melvin. And after a journey that took almost two days, the space shuttle Atlantis docked on the space station on Wednesday at 11.51 Eastern Standard Time. The space station is home to anywhere from two to seven astronauts and cosmonauts at any given time. They come from 15 different countries around the world, all cooperating together in the name of the space exploration and for the betterment of mankind. The work in the space station is highly technical with all kinds of responsibilities and work to accomplish. And because the astronauts must work and live closely together, they become more like a family than just colleagues. On the station, languages and cultural backgrounds may be different, but the astronauts know they have more in common than not. They recognize they're all human beings coming from the same beautiful place, planet Earth. Looking at Earth from space, no one sees a person's skin color or the divisions between countries or reasons for hatred or anger or war. With such beauty, the only thing Leland Melvin sees are reasons to be kind, compassionate, and accepting of others and ourselves. Everyone has hopes and dreams. Astronaut Melvin is li living one of his right now in outer space. But his bigger dream is that we here on Earth can find a way to be more like a family, just like on the space station, because where we live is really much smaller than any of us really know. I've been reflecting on all the things and all the people, all the experiences that I've had that have helped me get to this point right now. Last year I flew on Atlantis, the same shuttle, up to the International Space Station where we installed the Columbus Laboratory. This laboratory is used for doing experimentation, research, all the things that can help our civilization better itself using space technology. I just want to say this path to this venture, this, this jaunt into space, has all been because of my family. Not only my immediate family, but the extended family that I have in my community. It's important that we ensure that uh, a child's development comes from the people around them, the experiences they have, and all the things that they do with their lives to get to the destination that they want. You have to dream big, you have to dream big, long, solid dreams, and then figure out how to make those dreams become a reality. When I was a little boy, I loved sports, and I loved math, and loved science, and my parents helped fuel that curiosity by giving me footballs, basketballs, but also giving me books and making sure that I paid attention to my studies. I'm sitting here on the beach with my crewmates walking for the last time on the beach before we head off to the cosmos. If you look out to the water, there's exploration in the oceans. There's lots of things that we don't know about the oceans, just like there's so many things we don't know about the, the, uh, the space. So that's one thing we need to do is explore. But in this exploration, it's important that we think about the communities and the people that we have together. On my first space flight on Atlantis, going to the space station, I was there with Russian, German, French, I know, African American, Asian American, also Peggy Whitson, the first female commander on the space station. And so this lets you know that we have this international community in space working together for a common good. When you look out the window from space, you see the planet below you, there are no borders. They're just blues and greens and browns and snow-capped mountains that are just glorious in its nature. And it makes you pause and think that if anyone and everyone could see this, this view from space, there'd be no more wars. There'd be no more famine because people will work together to ensure that our civilization will come together and continue to work as one. When I get to space this time, we're installing a couple of uh, logistics modules that will add functionality to the station as in spare parts because the space, station, the space shuttle is not going to be going up anymore as it retires in 2010. We need a next generation of explorers though to carry on where we've left off. That's why it's important that you study hard, you eat your green beans, you listen to your teachers and your parents so that you can do and be anything that you dream. It's very important that you take the place of myself, of Tim Copra, of all the other astronauts that have 
been to Space Station and have been up there because we're going to need you to carry on the legacy of those that have fallen. The Columbia accident happened and I was a part of that where my friends did not come home. And one of the, one of the people that really helped change my life about this whole catastrophe was David Brown's father, who on the night of the accident, I went to his home and he looked me in my eyes and said, Leland, my son is not coming back and there's nothing you can do to bring him back. But he said the biggest tragedy would be if you don't continue to explore and carry on his legacy through your exploration. So it's so paramount that we as a civilization continue to explore to carry on the legacy of those that have fallen by the wayside, those that have given their lives to ensure that we have all the things that we have that we use today. So I'm very blessed and honored to be a part of another space station, a space shuttle crew going to the International Space Station where we can come together as one. No matter what color, no matter what shape, what size, what nationality, what religion, we come together as one people for the betterment of humankind. The TED Talks are a great, great vehicle and form for pulling ideas together, for helping people become as one. And I just want to say, Tyler, thank you for being the uh, narration of my voice. I'm sorry I can't be there, but I'm a little busy up in space now. And I just want to say to you, it doesn't matter what color you are. What matters is that you have a curiosity, that you have a wisdom, a determination, because all the colors of the rainbow are required for us to continue to explore. And I really appreciate you being there at TED to help carry on the message that I'm trying to say today. So thank you, TED. I can't wait to come back and share an additional TED experiences and uh, have a good time.